So I'll just share my screen. Just so hoping. Right. So I, I again sort of almost fell into my career path. After I was finishing my A-levels, I'd actually fallen out of love with maths and decided to apply to do a biology degree at Lancaster University. But very quickly, because of the setup Lancaster offered, we were able to choose a combination of modules. So I, I did a combination of modules across maths and biology and ended up in the end coming out with after four years with the uh, stats degree. This, this was generally quite methodological, but I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. And circumstances seemed to be leading me to London. So I emailed a lot of different people and said, does anyone want to give me a job? And at the time, Hammersmith Medicines Research was a small contract research organization in need of a statistician. So I was able to get take a post on there and get some experience working with the early trials. It was a challenging post because I was the only statistician. It was also one of those situations where sometimes I'd have all the work in the world. Other times I had very little. So I got experience doing different things like data entry. I even went down and helped out on the wards and learned about how different things worked. But after a while, I felt I needed something more and I was fed up of London. So decided to go back up north and went back to Lancaster to do my PhD. So that that was a very it was quite an applied PhD. We'd been given a data set by a company based up in the lakes, which um, looked at warfarin data. And now the thing is, with that type of data, you've got to it's constantly changing it's very much about tailoring treatment to the patient so i did a lot of research around tailoring decision treatment for treatment for decisions so i did my phd and as it was getting towards the end it was clear i wasn't going to quite finish before my funding ran out so it was suggested to be by one of the lecturers that there was a an opportunity to do some maternity cover down in Salford and so not the circumstances keep moving me around but I moved down to Manchester and took up a post there for six months whilst I finished my PhD. This gave me the opportunity to see how the NHS works and the fact that they need statisticians but it's not always as straightforward as we'd like. So that was, it was a very big eye opener, but that came to an end and I searched around and in the end took a post back into academia, working for the University of Manchester, where I stayed for six years. Originally, I worked, it was a, although we were a team of statisticians, we worked individually with different teams and I worked with mainly with different clinicians initially on a very quantitative stream where we looked at um, quality of care in primary care. And it was all about pay for performance, which was the buzzword back then. So that, that all went very well and I enjoyed that. I then took a year out to have my daughter. And after I came back, the structure of the centre had changed. The funding was coming towards an end. The people I'd been working with had all left. And I moved on and started working with sociologists, which was very much an eye opener. And it was it was all very much trying to apply statistics into a sociology, into something that was mainly naturally qualitative based. So after a while, my funding finished and it was clear that there wasn't really a role for me yet there anymore. And although I'd got a post permanent post with the University of Manchester because I'd gone part time I really struggled to find a different post so after a few conversations somebody said oh the, somebody in biostats has got a post going with the NHS why don't you go and talk to him so I kind of stumbled into the job it was a case of a brief interview with the um, 
academic and the lead down at the hospital and therefore the job was mine so I was able to go in and shape the job how I wanted it so I went in part-time I had the flexible working that I needed but I was the only statistician based down there so it was a very big learning curve I had to do everything although I'd got support from two academics they were giving a minimal amount of their time so most of the time it was being at the beck and call of whatever any clinician wanted so over time I had another child and whilst I was off having my second maternity leave they appointed somebody else to work alongside me and the team has grown but the trust has also grown so we originally were four hospitals we're now up to 10. We've had a change of name. We've had a complete change of structure and a progress through. But whilst I've stayed there, I've kept my links in with the university. They provide us with honorary contracts and I've managed to get an honorary promotion through. So I found I've been a bit all over the place. Everything I've done has generally been very applied, which has been quite useful because it's meant I've had to sort of think, right, I'm doing this now. What are the statistics I need to do for this? I, and it's given me ability to work with individuals from other disciplines. There's a wide variety of cases where I need to think about how do I engage my idea? How do I transmit this over? But also it's having the need to think about, right, this is what I need to do and read and interpret different papers the fact that I've come through academia has been very useful because we have an honorary contract with the university. This means we do continue working with students. And now in my current role, I'm also developing other statisticians. So my PhD helped in different ways. I, I don't find that I'm doing, I don't do a lot of methodological research anymore. Basically, I don't have time. But it does mean when I need to dip into things, the knowledge is still there. And it's taught me a lot of key things around how to explain an idea to people and, and how to write. It's actually quite surprising how a lot of clinicians do not know how to structure papers. So it's quite useful to have that skill to be able to support them. So to, to move on to tell you about what we do um, down in Manchester Foundation Trust. So we're possibly becoming unusual in that we're very, we've now grown to being a very big team of statisticians or comparatively speaking for the NHS. So everybody's come in from different levels of experience. As you could see, there's I'm the only one that actually has come in off a PhD, but we've got people who have come in from medical statistics from different universities. And the, the last two that have come in with the MSCs, they, one of them now has been working with us for nearly 10 years. So they've come into the junior level and they've gained their experience and then been promoted up. So we provide support across all of the Foundation Trust, but we also market our services elsewhere. So we've currently got an agreement in place with Nottingham and Stockport. But if somebody was to come to us from a diff different trust, we, we would be able to provide the services, providing they have the money to pay for us. And we, we cover anything, any area of research. So the, I, the dream for us is that somebody comes to us with an idea and we lead them right from the beginning, talking them through saying, well, what is it you want to do and help them think about what are the outcome measures and then given that question, what methods, how should we set things up? So it, this does mean we have the opportunity to be involved in grant applications. Again, we were often on them as collaborators and, but sometimes it, depending on what the need is, it might just be as a, as a study statistician or even just to give a small amount of advice. I, it's my role as senior statistician. I sit on a, an approval board where we review all the high level studies that are going through and decide whether or not the trust is willing to sponsor them. And so as part of that, we review all proposals that are going through and 
we do you know, we do get the opportunity to say yes or no for things we also get people coming with small projects saying well i've got this data set what shall i do with it can you can you give me some answers and we write we help produce things for per papers and for when people are going to conferences so as was just mentioned in the last talk we have the ideal way of working and a lot of the clinicians we work with work alongside us and they they do see us as equals there are others who very much they'll come in and you spend a lot of time trying to persuade them that actually you do know what you're talking about and it is a good idea to have us on board and this is why they need to listen to our ideas so you've always got that sense of satisfaction when you've developed a good collaboration and you've gone through and there's a successful grant or you get a paper published in a high level journal and it is the knowledge that whilst whilst it's a whole variety of things and i can't sit here and say oh you know this is a whole project of work we've worked on i've worked on different things i'm, I'm currently working on um looking into some cystic fibrosis data that trying to develop a amount to see whether if patients can take better vitamins whether it helps them manage their condition better we work on different areas we've we've got um one of the studies i'm involved with from nottingham is looking into an app to help people manage postnatal depression more and there's a lot of things that you can see even if it's some of the smaller studies actually it's going to improve the patient's quality of life if they give this different drug or if they manage their treatment differently you, you also do when you've developed a good working relationship with people people are yeah, they will say thank you that's worked and then they'll come back to you and we find that as we've worked with people they'll start coming back to you more and they'll let other people know that they should come and speak to statistics it, it is also good because there's never a dull moment you, you don't quite know what somebody's going to email you and ask you so there can be a lot of oh i was working on something in paediatrics and now i've suddenly got to think about something to do with end of life care it, it, it can be a whole one one extreme to the other so i mean for me i i found although i am the only person with a phd in my team it does help it, it has helped me with my my links into academia I, i'm in a fortunate position that I've, I've still got a lot of strong links so if i am struggling and i need advice on a particular method i can think about oh, you know i can talk to this person and it it does it does pay off because uh, yeah, as many people say working in the nhs can be quite isolating certainly in the first years when it was just me you you do you do feel that you've got to work hard to actually get people to understand what you're saying but it means you don't have that sounding board there in the same way so because my career has followed a, bit, a lot of very applied methods it has helped me to take the statistics and think right well this is the method that i want to apply but what does this actually mean in this area Do, does this mean something to them one of the common things we tend to find is we'll, we'll get especially with laboratory results people will come and say well this is how they're always presented and you have to sort of stop and think well do i do i agree with that is that actually the most appropriate way and and sometimes it isn't and you've got to kind of tactfully work your way through to say well you know but if we put it in this different way you know and, and sometimes it can be as silly as do we present a mean or a median and explaining to people why a mean is widely inappropriate so the, because and uh, generally the fact that in my career i've had to read around a lot of good quality papers so it gets you used to actually writing papers and thinking about those types of things and there are some methodological areas that are more applicable so 
if you if you've got an interest in study design prognostic modeling you know, we, we, we're quite often seeing meta-analysis a lot now because a lot of studies are the numbers of patient numbers are too small and we do need to try and find ways to group them together so the, there are different methods that are more useful in this career path so thank you great thank you very much catherine and um, i see a few people have put some questions in the chat